Welcome back to the Miskatonic Test Lab. I'm Jake, and today we're running through the Stranger Things fan-made scenario by Ian Martin. Now, there's a lot to cover here, so this video is going to be kind of divided into three major parts. The first one will be an overview of the investigators that Ian has provided for us, and I'll also be covering the deck that I'm bringing to the scenario. The second part is going to be the actual playthrough of the video, and the third part will be my final thoughts for the scenario. I'll try to keep it semi-spoiler free, um, but just know that there will be spoilers for not only Stranger Things, potentially, but also for the scenario. So if you'd like to jump to any of those parts, I'm going to leave the time codes in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's get on to it, and let's look at these investigators. So I can probably spend an entire episode going over these investigators and my review of them and what I think of them, but I'm not going to do that. In the interest of time, I'm just going to put them up on the screen and kind of give my very, very brief overview of what I think about them just initially. Okay, so let's start with Jim Hopper. Of course, it makes sense that he's Guardian, because Guardians have a lot of police-esque and um, savior-type cards. So I think that's awesome. Uh, it really fits well with the theming, and he has this cool parlay action that lets him basically evade enemies with his combat. Th that's, a, that's just uh, an interesting idea for a Guardian to be able to evade things, but using one of their dominant skills, which is combat. He can also take rogue cards, so he's kind of like a reverse skids. The snarky titled Coffee and Contemplation card has a lot of pips, so that's going to be fun. Self-medicated, of course, is his weakness. It looks like it puts a real pinch on your stats. Lucas, Dustin, and Mike are bunched together into one Seeker Investigator, uh, and they can splash Survivor cards, so that makes sense because they're both scrappy and curious. Bicycles, that's a great idea for, uh, for a, a signature asset, but it only gives you agility and not really mobility. Troy and James are the weakness there, the bullies from the show. Jonathan Byers is an investigatory rogue. That's great. Whenever he evades somebody he can, or an enemy, he can get more investigate. And he also has survivor, so very survivor-y investigators here. He has his camera, which he always seems to have in the show. It does take up a hand slot, so that's something to consider. But it looks like it gives you some, some nice effects. Loner is his uh, weakness, and he is a bit of a loner in the show, unfortunately. So that's nice theming. Joyce is looks like sort of a flashlight mixed with Agnes. She has great Agnes-y stats, and she can also take secret cards, very Agnes-y as well. Um, and she can minus two on the shroud, so she's a very uh, clovery Agnes. I guess Agnes is already a clovery Agnes, but you know, uh, it's especially focused with Joyce, so that's fun. Wall of Lights, that's a great callback to the show and a really iconic moment, which I'm glad made it into, into a card. No One Believes is great Arkham Horror theming because she's going insane or she feels that way. Nancy is a survivor with Guardian, and she gets plus one to all of her stats if a signature asset, or a unique ally, rather, is defeated. And she actually gets two unique allies in her deck. I really like how Steve Harrington is a weakness and an ally, because that shows not only character development in him, but also in Nancy, because if the unique um, asset ally version of him is defeated, she kind of grows as a person too by going through a traumatic experience and really that theme is great with barb because barb is her best friend and if anything happens to her um, she actually gets stronger because of it and that really fits not only with the theming of the show but the theming of the survivor class in general so after looking at all of these investigators, my inclination actually was to play with Nancy because I really liked what uh, Ian was doing with the multiple signature cards. Um, but my first pass would, went horribly wrong. So I decided, let's try Jim Hopper. He seems like he can pack the most heat and maybe deal with some of these enemies. So let's take a look at that deck. So my first pass with Jim Hopper was a nine experience deck that um, I used some lock picks and I used, I actually used Cat Burglar to try to 
evade some of the big uh, enemies that will that came out but i just didn't do too well because i found that uh, there's this big monster in the scenario the demogorgon as you may or may not know from the show um, that might just randomly engage you depending on the encounter deck so he was kind of a pain in the butt and i was not prepared for him a number of times and it made it very difficult so i decided to build sort of a sleight of hand lightning gun shotgun deck with i've had worse and that put me up to the 19 you know above nine experience so we did 19 experience with two weaknesses so anyway that being said i i think that this really worked out a lot better and because i was playing in standalone mode it was acceptable to use all 19 experience um but if you're playing this in a campaign you know you might have a rough time you might want to pack some testless damage like vicious blow or something like that but anyway let's start at the top uh 45 automatic i knew i wanted just kind of a backup gun something cheaper um that i can throw down if i if i pull it um in order to just fight straight away especially the little guys that i might have to fight lock picks was a must because there's n no better way uh to find clues other than flashlight when you're only when you only have the guardian and the rogue class to pull from so lock picks was amazing uh as a as an idea for getting those clues like i said lightning gun and shotgun go hand in hand with the no pun intended with the sleight of hand um and then fine clothes i threw in the deck because it really synergizes well with his ability which adds parlay test combat three in order to evade a non-elite enemy uh, and give it a damage so that's that was just kind of a no-brainer to help with those tests i threw dario al amin in there in order to get a lot of resources and to hopefully buff up some of those stats because dario buffs up a couple of your stats he, most notably for me was the investigate stat um, hard knocks was just to if i didn't draw any of my weapons it was going to help me to kind of at least knock out some of the enemies a little bit and deal some damage or help me evade uh, a one of liquid courage is in there because of such low um, sanity lone wolf is just a great card in any solo rogue deck or that you know deck that can take rogue cards and that would help me get even more um uh even more resources for the hard knocks or for whatever i needed pickpocketing level two is great because whenever you evade an enemy you get to draw a card and a resource and um gain a resource if you succeed by two or more and that's that just works perfectly with the parlay action that uh that lets you evade I've had worse is just perfect for that demogorgon because it's huge and when it comes to attack you you can just cancel most of the damage and gain resources instead dynamite blast was kind of another tech card for this uh, scenario because there are certain groups of enemies that might come after you and it would be nice to just deal with them all at once not to mention the demogorgon as well you can try to destroy it that way elusive is just I throw it into any rogue deck that I might have and it'll just kind of help us traverse around the map because the map is pretty big uh, emergency cash two of them that's just sort of like my go-to we need more money uh, i wanted to, to throw in the level one emergency caches but uh, we already kind of tied up all of our xp and then of course sleight of hand is going to help us get those lightning guns and shotguns or the lightning gun and the shotgun out in a pinch and if we really needed to we can throw down the uh, liquid courage as well and utilize or even the the uh, lock picks and utilize a little bit more of the tokens and finally for the skills i threw in guts in order to help us with those willpower checks for some of the uh, treacheries that might come out overpower is just going to give us extra boost uh, for the not only the parlay combat action for it but for any standard combat action we might do and perception is always good uh, for any guardian rogue or otherwise uh, difficult to investigate type classes um, perception really kind of puts you over the edge not to mention um, sometimes well maybe not in this deck but sometimes it's nice to be able to uh, in a rogue deck overextend yourself and exceed by more than you need to in order to get some extra bonuses 
So there it is. Join me at the table, and we're going to play through the Stranger Things fan-made scenario by Ian Martin. Welcome to Hawkins. Look, I wouldn't have called you in here if it wasn't important, the sheriff says, pausing to take a sip from a steaming mug of coffee. Normally, my mornings are reserved for some well-earned contemplation, but there have been some strange things happening in the town. He gestured out the window towards a town painful in its normalcy. The Byers boy's fallen off the face of the planet. We've had our first murder in God knows how long, and I get this feeling that... <sighs> he clears his throat suddenly, as if cutting off what he was about to say. Well, the long and the short of it is I wouldn't mind having someone else taking a look at things. Someone who isn't connected to this town. If experience has taught you anything, it's that only a fool trusts the calm exterior of a quaint town. You must find young Will Byers and get to the bottom of what is turning this town upside down. All right, here's a brief look at the chaos bag. Here's a brief look at the chaos bag for standalone mode standard. There are lots of skull tokens, a cultist, a tablet, and the elder thing. So we have the whole party here. <laughs> And there's a negative four and a negative five. And whenever you pull the skull, it's either minus one uh, or up to minus four. So we're going to kind of treat it like a minus four most of the time. And more often than not, we're going to probably pull the minus four or the minus five because there's just so many uh, of those skulls in there and so many um, things that can go wrong. There's a lot of really high tests in this scenario. So we're going to try to overachieve more often than not. And to set up the locations, uh, we take Will Byers, and we take a bunch of other random uh, treachery cards of a certain set. We mix them all up, and we put one underneath each location, and we're not allowed to peek at those until later on in the scenario when we're trying to officially find Will. And here are how the locations are basically connected. It's a little hard to read each location right now, but hopefully it'll be more clear once we start the actual game. Uh, feel free to pause the video or look back at this uh, time code, about 13 minutes, in order to see where the connections are if you get lost. Okay? All right, let's jump into the first agenda and act. Agenda 1A, The Vanishing of Will Byers. A young boy named Will Byers has gone missing in the small town of Hawkins. The townspeople and police have combed the area for clues but found nothing so far. Perhaps you may have more luck. When this agenda advances, shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until two agent enemies are discarded, spawn these enemies at Hawken National Laboratory. And that's a three Doom Threshold agenda. Act 1A, the search for Will. Will hasn't been seen since leaving the Wheeler residence. These kinds of disappearances are not normal for a town like Hawkins, and finding Will might help uncover what's really going on beneath the placid surface of these quiet neighborhoods. And it looks like we have three clues per investigator in order to advance. All right, for our starting hand, we get a weakness, so we're going to have to set that aside. And we're also going to decide uh, if we really need to pickpocketing. Probably not. So we'll see what we need to do. Just as a reminder, I do record these beforehand, and then I commentate later. So it looks like I get rid of that liquid courage as well. Drawn to another weakness, so I have to discard that. But we get an elusive uh, and another pick, another uh, lock picks, which is... You know, maybe a redundant, but we're going to need those lockpicks. It's kind of fortunate that we got both of those in our starting hand. We got our fine clothes, which is going to be great for Hopper's ability to uh, do parlay tests. And it looks like we just decide to put down that pickpocketing and the lockpicks right away and investigate with our final action. It's a doom threshold of two versus our, our investigate value of five, our intellect plus our agility. For the lockpicks and we do pass so we gain one clue that cultist is only a minus two so we do have to lose uh you know one of the uses of the lockpicks we break a lockpick all right for the mythos phase we get scars from the dark world which makes us test uh, willpower three and we get a horror for every point we fail by so we really don't want to get any horror right now we don't have a lot of ways to absorb that and hopper only has six so we throw in uh, our guts and we end up passing which draws us a card for guts all right so we're thinking about what we want to do uh, as i was saying we start at the Oh, we're investigating it for our first action. We start at that, that um, buyer's residence, which is Will's 
house and it has a, an action on the actual location that we can try to find clues from the token bank but if you use that action and you pull uh, any of the special symbols the face symbols basically the cultist or the skull or anything like that then the demogorgon comes after you so it looks like with our uh, second action we're going to move over to castle buyers out in the woods and it's a three doom threshold and, and we're debating whether or not it's worth it to investigate here we decide just to throw down that fine clothes just in case we engage any enemies. For the enemy phase, there's nothing. Upkeep phase, we draw into our liquid courage and we get a resource. For the mythos phase, we get bugged, which forces us to draw until we find an agent and he will engage us. All right, so now we have him to deal with over at Castle Buyers. And for our first action, we use Hopper's ability to parlay. Thankfully, we put down that fine clothes. That'll make it uh, just a parlay test. Um, we have to just beat one with the parlay test. And our base fight value is four. So it's four versus one. And let's see what we get. We're just reading about pickpocketing. And we realize that was a fast action. <laughs> and I don't know if we corrected that. Minus four, so we actually fail. So that's a bummer, but we decide to just do it again because Fine Clothes doesn't um, get exhausted to use it. It's just a static ability. And this time we get a plus one. So we're able to use Hopper's ability to evade this agent and deal one damage to him. And he's going to go to that location, and we decide to get the heck out of there and go back to the buyer's residence. Oh, first we use pickpocketing because we did evade him. And after you... Uh, evade an enemy you can exhaust pickpocketing to draw a card and gain a resource if you beat it by two which we did and we get the lightning gun so that's great we're getting all of our pieces really early all right enemy phase he and then uh he doesn't have hunters so he doesn't move toward us but for the upkeep phase he does stand up we stand our our lock picks back up we draw a card and we gain a resource we get hard knocks that's going to be useful for basic um, combat actions, maybe for our parlay combat actions, or for evading enemies if we need to. All right, we uh, advance. We get three doom on that, and we have to do what it says, which is to get uh, discard cards until we get two agents and put that at the laboratory up there in the north. When we flip over the agenda, it's actually Dr. Brenner. And Dr. Brenner basically gives any any agent at his location Hunter and plus one health and plus one combat. So let's read this Agenda 2A. Agenda 2A, Bad Man. You don't know whether you're seeing things, but there seems to be strange men in suits throughout the town. They seem to be looking for something or someone. Forced, it should be forced, when the Hunter keyword on an enemy would resolve, reveal a random token from the Chaos Bag, and if you reveal... Uh, Aldrichide symbol, a positive number, or a zero, that enemy doesn't move. So, if and then enemies at the same location determine this as a group. So any hunter keyword could be canceled by this effect while this agenda is out. Forced at the end of the round, place one doom on this agenda for each agent enemy at the same location as eleven. We haven't found out where eleven is yet, but I'm sure we will soon. And it has a nine doom threshold, so that's much more time than three doom. Okay, back to the table. All right, so back at the table, we still have our encounter card to draw for the Mythos phase, so let's see what we pull. We get another copy of Bugged, but this time it's uh, going to actually whiff because the Revelation effect um, says that if there are no agents, spawn an agent, but if there are agents, which there are four agents on the board, uh, they move closer to 11, but we don't have 11, so that's just going to whiff. Okay, so we're going to move on to the investigation phase. We still need uh, one final clue to advance. We have two out of the three that we need. We could uh, go back to the and and handle that uh, enemy over to the to the left at the castle buyers, but we kind of want to get far away from that troop of enemies that are going to be following us. So we move down to the middle school and we try to investigate with our lock picks, only to find the auto fail token. So with our final action, we have an exhausted lock picks, but we do have a base uh, intellect value of three, so we decide maybe we can just 
pull a chaos token and see what happens. And we only get a minus one. So three versus two, we pull a minus one, we succeed. So we just gam gambled there and we we're able to get our three clues in order to advance. But we're going to wait until the beginning of our next turn in order to advance. For the um, enemy phase, we pull uh, a token to see if the hunter keyword is going to be canceled and we get a negative five. So it's not canceled. They do move toward us. For the upkeep phase, we draw into the shotgun and we gain a resource. And those lockpicks, of course, get reset. And we move on to the next Mythos phase. We add a Doom. We draw an encounter card. And it's Friends Don't Lie. We have to put Friends Don't Lie into our threat area. And our allies' text boxes are blank. And at the end of the round, we can test Willpower 3 to get rid of um, Friends Don't Lie. And there's also some text about 11 potentially getting, uh, you know, losing possession of 11 and staying at whatever location she's at. All right, so we do advance the act, and we're going to read that. Act 1B, The Weirdo on Maple Street. As you're searching through the town, you come across a small figure looking desperate and scared as it stands in the pouring rain. For a moment, you're overjoyed, thinking that it must be Will. But as you come closer, you see that it's someone else. A young girl with a shaved head stands there in dirty hospital clothes, watching you with wary eyes. She doesn't answer at first as you ask her for her name and for her story. And finally, she musters one word, Eleven. Although she does not offer much more, it's clear from her demeanor and the few words that she speaks that she's on the run and that those she's running from have done her great harm. Although you still don't know the whole story, anyone who can inspire such fear in a child is capable of doing anything. Put the set aside 11 into play at the lead investigator's location. Act 2A. The Flea and the Acrobat. With Eleven's help, you continue the search for Will. She seems to know something about where he is, and you're more than sure than ever that this isn't a normal disappearance. The trail seems to ultimately lead back to that secretive laboratory at the edge of town. You must find out what's going on there at any cost, but it won't be easy. And it has the action, we can spend four clues per investigator as a group, reveal Hawkins' national laboratory. Objective, if the investigators have gained access to the Upside Down, advance. And I suspect that we'll gain access to the Upside Down uh, somewhere in that laboratory. Let's get back to the table. So back at the table, we're getting the set aside 11 and putting her at the um, middle school where we are. And she has the parlay action test intellect three. And if we succeed, then we can take control of her. She has one health and five sanity. And she can, for a free action, exhaust and take a horror in order to deal one damage to every enemy at the location. That's really cool. All right, so that was the very that was before all of our actions even started, and so I can imagine that the first action I'm gonna want to take is to parlay with Eleven to get her, to convince her to join us. The um, that's so that's exactly what we do because those agents are hot on our tail, and I really don't want them to get to Eleven before I can convince her to come with me. So we pull a minus one, and we only needed to beat one because of our fine clothes. So Eleven, I guess, really liked her clothes, and she comes with us. Maybe instead of fine clothes, it should just be a picture of, like, Ego's inside joke, I guess. <laughs> All right, so with our second action, we decide we're going to try to... Uh, we d we're debating whether or not we want to actually investigate there with our lockpicks or just move. So we just move to get as far away from those agents as possible... They do have to wrap around to get us. They can't cut across to get us. So, and and that's ended up working in our favor because this only has a, is a one shroud location here, at the uh, downtown area. So we exhaust lock picks, and we do uh, an investigate action with those lock picks, and we have a base value of five versus one, and we pull a zero. So we don't break that lock pick, luckily, and we get to take that clue. At the end of our turn, we have to do a test for the uh, friends don't lie treachery to try to get rid of it. And we have nothing really to be boost willpower that much. Okay, we have one liquid courage, so that boosts it by one. That still only brings us up to four willpower versus three. So let's see. We're hoping for the best. We actually get the elder sign. So that's great. We could get rid of that friends don't lie treachery. We're checking our elder sign ability, but it really only um, deals damage to exhausted enemies. It's not going to help us in this situation.
So that's great. We get rid of that and we move on to the enemy phase. We still draw a negative number, so those hunter enemies are all going to follow us. That um, rogue agent over there doesn't have hunter because he's not with Dr. Brenner. So they, they only gain hunter when he's in the same location. And we're just reading what, uh, the locations. We go to the upkeep phase, we ready our lockpicks, and we get Dario in our hand and a resource. That's going to be perfect for hopefully getting to that 10 resource threshold with Dario in order to increase our intellect. For Mythos phase, we add a Doom and we get Scent of Blood. That just hangs out in our threat area, and if we're ever damaged, then the Demogorgon is going to smell it and engage with us uh, no matter where he is in the set-aside location, and uh, set-aside or wherever he is. So that's really scary. We really don't want to get damaged at all. Okay, so we put, for our first action, we put Dario on the board. For our second action, we uh, exhaust him to gain two resources. For our final action, we move to the quarry. So we didn't talk much about the downtown location, but it has the action to add uh, uses to firearms, and also you can purchase the Christmas lights there. At the quarry, uh, it has a forced ability for whenever you get into a fight. You have to pull a random chaos token, and you might get additional damage, I believe. For the enemy phase, we see if that hunter keyword is canceled, and we get another Elder Sign token, so they don't come toward us. And for upkeep, we draw into our sleight of hand, and we uh, get a resource. We have pretty much all of the pieces necessary to uh, protect us against the Demogorgon. We have the lightning gun, a shotgun, a sleight of hand, and an elusive. So we're pretty set. Uh, for the mythos phase, we add a doom. We're double-checking the scent of blood to make sure nothing happens. And we get another bugged, which means that everybody, all the enemies, do move toward 11 because now 11 is out on the field. So that rogue agent is going to move toward us, going into the buyer's residence. All those three agents get to the downtown location. Now, I'm thinking about how the downtown location is connected to the library just north of us. So even if we move to the uh, library, those agents can just directly follow us. Luckily, the Wheeler residence in the middle of town uh, or of the map um, has the text on it that agents cannot enter it until it's Agenda 3. So that's kind of like a neat little safe zone that uh, Ian's built in for us. And I really love the theme of that, that we can kind of hide out uh, in the Wheeler residence while the agents are kind of fumbling around trying to find us. So we're probably going to want to evade them as much as possible. We're debating what we want to do because we're, there's a multitude of options here. We can we could try to take them head on and with 11 deal one damage to everybody and sleight of hand our, our lightning gun and try to shoot everybody and kill everybody. But I think we want to reserve most of our firepower for the Demogorgon. We head up to the library and we try to investigate with the lockpicks. And we lose a, a lockpick and break it, but we do succeed because it was only a, a shroud of one versus our uh, five intellect. Well, intellect plus agility. Then we move over to the Wheeler residence because we know that it's nice and safe there and has the, the uh, action to spend two actions in order to heal an ally. So we pull the token anyway just to see if anything happens. Um, but they are not going to move toward us because uh, there's nowhere for them to go. They're just basically stuck right there. They, they're blocked. They can't come into the Wheeler residence. All right, for the upkeep phase, we draw a card. We get a resource. We get an overpower. And we discard the lockpicks. But we, we accidentally discard the pickpocketing because we thought we were discarding the lockpicks. We forgot to discard the lockpicks when that lo last lockpick broke. Okay, so for Mythos phase, we add a Doom, and we draw an Encounter card, and we get Flickering Lights. This treachery is brutal. Basically, it just says that if you're not engaged with the monster, spawn it at your location. So that's exactly what we do. And if you run into that card early, you might as well scoop, I think, because um, having to deal with this guy, and I'm, I'll put him up on the screen here. Having to deal with a four fight, three health, four agility uh, monster that deals three damage and three horror is just so tough if you're not ready for it. So you really need to pack uh, an elusive or a test of will or something to cancel the treachery or some, you know, just a lot of boost in order to deal with this guy. Luckily, we do have our combo, the Slightning Gun, as some people like to call it, in order to get the Lightning Gun out with sleight of hand without provoking attack, an attack of opportunity. So that's exactly what we do. It costs us just one resource, and that is a fast action. So with our first action, we're going to use the Lightning Gun to try to blow this guy up. The Lightning Gun gives us 
essentially nine combat versus four. We get a minus four, but we still pass, which deals two additional damage, so three damage total, and we take care of the Demigorgon in one fell swoop. I think this kind of um, undersells how big of a deal it is to uh, encounter the Demogorgon early in the game. If you, like, say you get it as your very first treachery, you're screwed because there's no way that you're going to have, you know, unless you're super lucky and you get the lightning gun combo in your opening hand, um, I've had to really just it's kind of like a downward spiral spiral from there anyway so we deal with him uh and we're thinking well we want to get the most use out of this lightning gun before it goes back into our hand because of slight the sleight of hand and we think that maybe we're going to move over and deal with that um that agent but we also might be okay with just letting that uh lightning gun exhaust but nope we decided to make the most use of it and when we get there we're like wait a minute we can just parlay for one and evade him in order to get the pickpocketing so poor lightning gun is just going to stay there <laughs> and have to um, go back into our hand having only used it once but it was still worth it to use it just once we decided to, to uh, just not throw in the overpower and just test our four versus uh, one and we get a minus two so we succeed we exhaust him and deal a damage which lets us trigger the pickpocketing to draw a card but we didn't succeed by two so we don't get to get a resource as well that was all of our actions because we had to move over there for an action and then parlay with it for an action so moving on to the uh enemy phase we do get a symbol that makes them move toward us unfortunately luckily we're two spaces away from them so they're not going to get us but they do move toward us and then for the upkeep phase we draw a card and gain a resource and we do have three weaknesses in this deck so we're doing really good and getting really lucky not drawing into any of any of those okay and it looks like i drew into the um, i've had worse but it kind of scrolled over so we can't see it that's i've had worse is going to be great for absorbing all that demogorgon damage we get a government agent for the mythos phase and we add a doom we're at five doom now we only need nine and we're thinking that we should probably just evade this guy. We're going to get that pickpocketing trigger, and then we can move on and try to get some more clues because we only have two clues. We need two more in order to advance. We throw in the overpower to make sure that we succeed, and we get a zero. So we draw a card for succeeding with the overpower, and we get the lone wolf with that. And then uh, we're also going to be able to trigger the pickpocketing to draw and gain a resource because we succeeded by two. I do have nine cards in my hand, so we're going to have to discard at the end of this round. He exhausts and goes to the uh, location, and he gets a damage. And then, like I said, we're going to get that pickpocketing card and resource. We draw into uh, Perception, and we get a resource. Discarding that. Overpower. And with our next action, we're going to move back to the Wheeler Residence. And our third action, we're thinking of what we want to do. We can either move to the library or just get the lone wolf down. So that's what we do because we want to um, try to get that Dario buff. We do pull a, a token to make those uh, hunter enemies move toward us. And we decide to have them move uh, since it's equidistant either up or to the right. We have them go up because even though they're going to absorb that other little um, agent over there, we wanted to make them get kind of as far away from us as possible all right for upkeep we get to draw a card and gain a resource looks like we drew into another lone wolf uh, but we have way too many cards we have 10 so we need to discard down to eight we get rid of a couple of uh, redundant cards all right for mythos phase we add a doom and we draw into another scent of blood but there's only limit one per investigator so that's a whiff it doesn't gain surge either, so that just is a softball for us. That's great. For our first action, we're thinking of either going probably to the library, or we forgot to ready those things, to the library or up to the junkyard. And we just need to get as many clues here as possible. We get a resource for Lone Wolf, we move up to the junkyard, revealing that it's a two-shroud location, and it has a cool little text about evading enemies when they enter. We throw down our second lock picks for our first action, or our second action, and our third action, we investigate with those lock picks. We throw in a perception to guarantee success here. So that puts us at seven versus two. And let's see what we pull from the chaos bag. Oh, we put another one in. We put an agility in because we can, you know, for the lockpicks we combine agility. So it's eight versus two. 
and we succeed. So we're getting, I think, a little paranoid that we're going to pull minus five or something. And we really wanted to beat, beat it uh, by more than two in order to not break our lock picks. I think that's another reason. We just wanted to really knock it out of the park so we don't break any of those lock picks. We're going to need them for the longevity of this. So we get that clue, and then for the enemy phase, they do move toward us. Of course, they can't enter that middle location, so they have to wrap all the way around. And we draw for the upkeep phase, and we finally get one of our weaknesses, uh, Haunted, which gives us minus one to each of our skills. For Mythos phase, we added Doom, and we get the State Trooper, who goes to the location with the most clues, and at the end of the Mythos phase, he takes one of those clues. So that's exactly what he does. He reduces that quarry's clue count by one. And for our first action, we're going to move down to the library, and we're going to try to investigate. So we do have those lockpicks still, and it has a, a shroud of one. We forgot the lone wolf resource, so we do that really quick. And with our second action, we're going to investigate. We're thinking about throwing that perception in there just to make sure we don't break any locks, lockpicks. Um, let's see if we decide to throw that in or not. Just verifying that Dario is only uh, good if we have 10 resources. But we only get minus one, so we still succeed by at least two. We don't have to break any lockpicks. And we have our fourth and final clue that we need, but it requires an action to advance, so we just decide to do it with our last action. But we don't quite get to advance because we haven't officially gained access to the Upside Down. We need to go to the Hawkins National Laboratory in order to achieve that. So it has the parlay uh, action to test our uh, intellect three, and, I mean four, and if we succeed, or if we fight our way through with combat four, then we can gain access to the upside down. All right, we pull our token for the enemies to see if they move toward us, and they do in fact, because we pulled a negative number. And we go to the upkeep phase. We realized, I think retroactively, that we had minus one to all of our stats. So that last investigate would have broken a lockpick for us, I believe. We also drew into another copy of Dario and gained a resource for the upkeep phase. For Mythos, we add a Doom. We're going to be at 8 now, and we draw an encounter card. Our encounter card is another copy of Bugged. So they are all going to move one location towards 11. That's probably the worst case because they have a little shortcut straight to us. So unfortunately, they all engage us, all four of these enemies. Luckily, we're a bit decked out with some things that we can use to fight them. We really don't want to get damaged because then the Demogorgon's going to come. Uh, we're thinking about how we can handle that. If we do end up getting damaged, we have the I've Had Worse to absorb that damage. And we need to figure out a way to deal with all these guys. Uh, luckily, we have Elusive. So we're kind of debating whether or not we want to use Eleven's power first, uh, which uh, you, deal, you exhaust her, deal her a horror, and that allows her to deal one damage to everybody. At your location, we're also thinking if we want to use Hopper's ability to deal an additional damage, uh, since it is a parlay that won't provoke any attacks of opportunity. And then we can probably use that elusive also to teleport us straight to the lab. So let's see what we do. So yeah, after some contemplation, I could not pass up the ability to uh, thematically just destroy everybody in Eleven's path. We give her a little bit of horror, her nose starts bleeding, I can almost hear the soundtrack to Stranger Things happening right now as she kills one of the government agents and leaves only three of these guys left. Well actually she's close to killing one of them, they, that guy on the far left, he would normally only have two health, but Dr. Brenner is giving him an additional health. So anyway, we do that, we damage for free, that wasn't even an action yet, and then we use the fast action to play elusive for two resources in order to disengage with all of the enemies at our location. Uh, they don't exhaust because we don't evade them, they just all disengage at that location, and then we teleport ourselves over to the lab. And we're fortunate enough that uh, a security guard was not at the lab because there are some security guards that go to the lab, which is very clever on Ian's part to try to uh, avoid the strategy of using Elusive to teleport straight to the lab. Um, that's really great. So we get there, and we still haven't re uh, taken an official action yet. So with our first action, we first two actions, we get rid of that weakness, and our final action, we're going to try to parlay to discover the Upside Down. So with our fine clothes and with some perception, that brings us up to three, four, five versus two. So five versus two. We're thinking of 
what other uh, cards, pips we can throw in there. We throw in another one. That gives us six versus two. And we're debating whether or not that's enough for us. And that might be the only thing we want we can do because we want to save all the rest of these tools in our hand for the Demogorgon. And we do get a minus four, which is perfect because we had that six. We threw in that Dario at the last second. We were able to discover the upside down and we get to advance. The other side of the act card is actually a story asset called the gate or just gate. Revelation put gate into play at Hawkins National Laboratory, which we are in. And it has an action to take control of one copy of Into the Upside Down and place it in your third area. And at this location, we can take an action to exit the Upside Down and remove it from our third area. And it has the fluff, are you sure you want to do this? And, well, we have to because we have to find Will. So let's do this. Act 3A, the Upside Down. You must enter the strange world at the other end of the gate, locked within the Hawkins National Laboratory to find Will. It has an action. We could spend a clue, if we've entered the Upside Down, to reveal a face-down card underneath your location. If it's an ally, a.k.a. Will, take control of it. Now, we know that there's only one ally underneath uh, the locations total. And there's only one will. The rest are all treacheries that might hurt us in some way. So all of those cards that have been underneath the locations that we've been ignoring, if we enter the upside down, we can start flipping those over. It has another action uh, ability. If we control 11 and we're at the monster's location, because that Demogorgon can still come back, we can exhaust 11 and test willpower 7. The base value of your willpower is uh, the remaining sanity on 11. And if we succeed... We add the monster and 11 to the victory display. She sacrifices herself for us, presumably. And if the objective is that if Will Byers has been revealed, we get to advance. Back at the table, that was our final action. So we have to move on to the enemy phase. We draw a, a chaos token, and the hunters do move toward us. Um, they get to go to the connecting location, which is that downtown area. They skip across. We accidentally took a the face down card with us so we fix that and uh, we move on to the upkeep phase where we should be readying 11 so we ready 11 and we get to draw a card which is our next weakness unfortunately and we get a resource and we get hypochondria which is after you take one or more damage take one direct horror which is just awful with that scent of blood because if we take damage we're gonna have the demogorgon come after us and we're gonna get a direct horror now all right, so we place uh, for the Mythos phase, we place one Doom, which is going to get us to our nine Doom threshold, and let's go ahead and read that agenda. It got me. Agenda 2B. The suspicious agents aren't the only problem. There's a strange monster terrorizing the town, and it's only growing bolder with time. We know, because we encountered it. And it says, if the monster's in play, place one damage on a face-down encounter card underneath the location. And if the monster's not in play, spawn it at the buyer's residence, if able, and shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Agenda 3A, at your door. Time is running out if you hope to find Will Byers alive. Forced, when this agenda would advance by reaching its doom threshold, instead, remove all doom in play and place one damage on each of two different face-down encounter cards underneath locations to a maximum of two on each card. And if you can't place damage on any of the cards, proceed to resolution three. Objective, if an agent enemy is at the same location as 11 and she's not controlled by an investigator, advance. And it only has one doom threshold. So every single round, there's going to be two damage put on different uh, treachery cards underneath locations. And if we can't do, if we just exhaust uh, all of our resources and damage everything, we have to advance. Or if 11 is captured and we're not there, then, then that's uh, game over, I presume. Also, uh, the center location, the Wheeler residence, is now, uh, ex you know, now the agents can enter it without being blocked because it is agenda three now so we have to keep that in mind as we traverse um, for the rest of the game back at the table we're putting the demogorgon at the buyer's location which is just south of us and he has a uh, hunter so that's going to be not fun um, and then we're just kind of setting up the rest of what we just read
So we still have to draw an encounter card and we get pulled into the dark. Test agility four. If you fail, you lose control of a non-story ally and we have to take a horror. So the only non-story ally we have is Dario and there's no real way that we can boost our agility that high. We only have two agility. So he's basically doomed to fail, but we still have to pull a chaos token just in case any other awful thing might happen. We get a minus one. We knew we were going to fail. So we have to put Dario face down at our location and take a horror. This might actually work in our favor because uh, that's going to give us an additional uh, round, essentially, to um, put damage. But actually, just kidding, because we have to put damage on treacheries. Ian, you thought of that. Okay, so we just put him face down. He's got pulled into the upside down. All right, so with our first action during the investigation phase, we get... We take the action on the gate to go into the upside down. So we've now entered the upside down, but into the upside down into our threat area. And it says you've entered the upside down, all enemies other than the monster and all other investigators, unless they have also entered the upside down are not considered to be at your location. And if you have researched alternate realities from the library into the upside down gains action, test intellect four, if successful, discard one upside down treachery from your threat area. So I have a feeling those are going to build up on us. So that was our first section. We're officially entering the Upside Down. Uh, and we're thinking of, we, we can't move past the Demogorgon because he's the only thing that can still engage us. So we're going to use Elusive to try to get far away. Um, so we go down to the, well, I guess not too, too far away. We get down to where there's only, you know, one, one clue that we can safely try to escape after we investigate. So we get down to the middle school to try to investigate. And the middle school has a really cool ability that if we have 11, we can uh, do a test in order to peek at one of the upside down cards. But we just don't have a ton of time to activate that right now, even though we do have 11, because we want to investigate and we want to move. So that's exactly what we do. We investigate with 5 versus 2. Unfortunately, we get a minus 4 with that skull token. So we do not succeed, and we lose a lockpick. And we're trying to figure out what else we want to do. We figure instead of moving let's just get this shotgun ready so we can deal with this demogorgon and we can try to finish out this game without uh getting hunted now in retrospect this is probably a bad move we should have moved to the downtown location so that way the demogorgon would have an additional step in order to get to us but i think we we're getting a little cocky and we just wanted to finish him off so during the enemy phase um these guys are going to move toward us they're not going to engage us because we're in the upside down. However, the Demogorgon is going to engage and attack us all in one. So we're going to be forced to use the I've Had Worse. But we can only absorb up to five damage and or horror. So we're going to do cancel up to five. But we have to take one horror. Because if we take a damage, we'll take a direct horror anyway with the weakness. So that's exactly what we do. And we gain five resources. We take that horror. And then we're going to try to use our next two actions to kill this Demogorgon. Now, another mistake that we made is that we probably should have played the Lightning Gun instead of the Shotgun. I think I was trying to make it last as much as possible, but it was just not a good idea. So for anyway, upkeep, we get Hard Knocks and we get a resource. We add a Doom, which gets cleared, and we have to damage up to two Upside Down uh, Treacheries. So that's what we do. And then we move on to the investigation phase, at which point we have to fight this Demogorgon, otherwise we've lost all hope. So we can exhaust 11 in order to deal one damage to him and to, to all the enemies at our location. Unfortunately, they're not cons all the agents aren't considered to be at our location, so we can only use 11 to uh, get the Demogorgon. We're reading about the second action on the uh, act in order to try to test willpower 7, but there's no way for us to boost our willpower up beyond 7. Um, so we're not going to be able to sacrifice 11 in order to take out the Demogorgon uh, once and for all. But we can shoot it with a shotgun, so we try to do that. We add our combat value to that shotgun blast. And I think we're like, should we also get rid of that lightning gun as a pip? And we just feel bad that we had to, that we kind of made the mistake to um, not put the lightning gun out first. But anyway, we add that. We end up doing 
one damage only because we just break even. So that sucks. We're hoping to do way more damage than that, but we got a minus four. And our only other option is to shoot again and hope for the best. We shuffle and we get a minus two, which since we only have, I think the shotgun only has plus uh, three. So we have seven minus two. That's five. We only succeed by one. And so we're really feeling disappointed here because there's no way that we uh, could defeat the Demogorgon. But then we realize, oh, 11 can deal one little damage. She takes a horror, so thank God we're able to get rid of that uh, just in time. We could have done so much better if we just threw down the lightning gun instead. But, you know, oh well. That's the way that we did it. All right, so as long as we don't have to engage the Demogorgon again, we're... We can kind of hopefully safely find Will, gather all the rest of the clues that we need, and find Will. For our last action, we tried to luck sack and investigate test, but we failed. Because we had nothing to boost our meager uh, three intellect. So we're thinking about trying to get to the buyer's residence next round uh, in order to trigger it's risky but we need to get as many clues as possible and that's the fastest way to get them in order to find will and to get the most we draw for our mandatory draw and we get a dynamite blast which is going to be great hopefully to kill the demogorgon if we can evade him and move he'll get defeated anyway or we can throw down that dynamite blast and and destroy him um but that might destroy us in the process so because he's going to give an attack of opportunity so we would really have to be in a separate location in order to do that so, I, you know, I pack the Dynamite Blast more for the agents, not necessarily for the Demogorgon, because he will do an attack of opportunity, killing us anyway, um, if we're at the same location. But anyway, let's see what happens. So our first action, we're going to try to, I think we should try to investigate and get this clue. Um, but we don't. We just move over to the buyer's residence because we really are running out of time, and that's going to be the fastest way to get everything out. We put the lightning gun down because we know that if we fail, we're going to, if we pull a, a token that has a symbol, we're going to engage the Demogorgon, and that's exactly what we do. And that was our last action. So again, in retrospect, you don't want to do this for your last action because you want to be able to fight back. I should have just waited, uh, weathered the storm a little bit of the of the Mythos phase, seen what came out. Because now we have this Demogorgon with us. We can't fight it. It was our very last action. So we're going to have to just suffer all the consequences, which is to get three damage and three horror. And then our weakness says that we get a direct horror if we get damaged. So we can kind of distribute this amongst uh, Eleven and uh, Hopper and the Fine Clothes. Um, so that's what we're going to try to do. We're just kind of resolving how we're going to accept all this damage. So we assign one horror and one damage to the Fine Clothes. We assign horror to Eleven. We assign three damage to ourselves and one horror to ourselves. So we really can't, we can't really suffer that much again. And we get the direct horror from the... Uh, weakness so we really can't suffer that much more and of course for the upkeep we draw into our other weakness which everything is coming back to bite us now um, that really puts a strain on our skills we get minus one to all of our skills and if we um, uh, basically we have to drink the self-medicated resources and get minus one to all of our skills otherwise we get horror which we cannot suffer we just rearranged some of the horror. I think we did the math a little wrong, but I'm basically one away from dying now. So we have to, for the mythos phase, we add a doom, which gets cleared, and then we have to damage some locations. So we damage, so, I mean, some more treacheries under the locations. Self-medicated, we use the resource, so that way we don't get the horror at the end of our turn, and it gives us minus one to all of our stats. And our last hope is to kill this thing with the lightning gun. So that would give us nine versus its four. And we do succeed, thankfully. Uh, we get minus four, which gives us uh, five versus four, but then we have minus one to all of our stats. So that's four versus four. That was the perfect draw. We kill him in one fell swoop. Thank God. And then we try again, hoping to not get the Demogorgon. 
and we get we end up getting uh, a clue we didn't pull the demogorgon again and we use the clue to flip over one of the cards with our last action but unfortunately it says at the end of the round take one horror or take one damage and if we take one damage we automatically take one horror and that puts us at our six horror threshold because anything else would kill 11 and that's it the end we go insane and we do not get to find will but let's see what happens in the resolution so each investigator was defeated you awake on the outskirts of hawkins entering the town again you find that strangely weeks have passed will byers was never found and several more people have gone missing there are no leads no trace of what happened and the people of the town seem to ignore you and quickly leave when you try to talk to them it appears that you have failed and it's time to move on in your campaign log, record that Eleven was taken, the monster survived, and the town is still in danger, and Will Byers didn't make it. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. And that's it. All right, let's move over to my final thoughts for this scenario. All right, wow. Uh, Ian, you really blew me away with this scenario. It is just so deep that you really, you can tell that it's really polished, that you really play tested it, and I loved most aspects of it. It was really great theming, really great understanding of the, the Arkham Horror card game in general, and understanding of the strategies, strategies that would be used to defeat it. Um, and I'm really excited to go back and try some of these other investigators. I tried Nancy before. I didn't really succeed because the Demogorgon was a little tough. Uh, that leads me to maybe the only negative that I had about this scenario was that the Demogorgon was so hard that if you encounter him early, maybe even as your first treachery, and you get that one treachery that just has the Demogorgon engage you, you kind of might as well scoop because there's no way to deal with him effectively because he has such high combat and high agility. Maybe uh, ha having him, giving him a three agility might have helped to ease the pain a little bit in order to evade him, especially with certain investigators. And maybe that was the case for some investigators that they might might have been better uh, than Hopper at evading the Demogorgon. Um but yeah, overall, just great theming. I love the location abilities, the ability to pick up the Christmas lights at the downtown area, um, the middle school ability to have Eleven find Will anywhere. I kind of wish that that ability on the middle school to find Will was maybe on Eleven herself or even on the act because there's just not a lot of time to have to get to a specific location in order to peek. Um, I guess that's the point because you want to be able to suffer uh, some of those treacheries that you might flip over towards the end, which also I think were a little brutal, a little lose more, I guess, if, <laughs> if we can take a, the win more term from other competitive games. Um, because at that point, you're so down and just reaching uh, for success that when you get one of those things and they're a lasting effect like that, it really is pretty awful. Maybe if there is a way to get around those besides the, the, the research uh, at the library, that might have been good. But I still like that you included that research aspect. I forget what it was called, but the ability on the library to um, basically, f you know, flip over the get rid of those treacheries that you pull so you did think of it but it was still a little hard for me uh but who knows maybe other people would have a better time with it with that aspect there were just so many times during my testing and during my playthroughs that i had just an aha moment where i totally understood what ian was going for uh story-wise and it, it elicited such memories of the show during those certain instances like when i had 11 damage all of those um those characters or when she got mad because of that treachery and she had we had to try to convince her to, to join us again that didn't happen in this playthrough but that's a potential thing that could happen hopper delving into the upside down was just a, a great moment and even less impactful subtle things like in the mechanics like nancy uh, Wheeler having to getting getting that willpower and getting all those stat boosts from um, one of the assets maybe one of the allies getting destroyed that makes her stronger as a person or having to overcome her boyfriend and then he he also has a change of character um, putting the uh, Lucas and um, what, what are the kids names putting all those kids together uh, as a one secret investigator is just really awesome there's just so many good ideas here uh, I really had a fun time with it I, I can't recommend it highly enough to everybody that wants to play it so please download it give it good reviews on arkhamcentral.com uh, try it out 
hopefully, uh, I think that there's some fixes that, that need to be done on Arkham Central. So go to the Mythosbusters um, website, download it there. Thank you so much for staying with me for this whole playthrough. It was a really long one because we had to get through some of the investigator reviews and all of that as well. I really try to aim for shorter videos, uh, but this one just required my full attention, but it was that good. So if you're still here and you're still listening to this, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any other suggestions, any comments, um, anything at all, please leave them in the comments. Uh, and, and of course, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much and have a good day.